You know what? From now on, I think I'm going to do the countdown because you're just losing your countdown spark. Okay. Wow. Well, well, well. Well, 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 well. She loses the spark, but she gains two pigtails. Every visual learner. Visual learner. This is a debut. Two, I'm wearing two French braids. It's a new style that I've. It kind of ties into my town hall. Does it? <laughs> a li- yes. Remember. And again, unintentionally so, we're matching. Again, we, guys, we don't like coordinate outfits ever, we don't talk about it. Uh, unless we're gonna go out and then Nick desperately asks me like what we're gonna wear and then I'm just like no just I not. I literally don't do that no but, well, okay you don't <laughs> never in my life you you'll no, see what I wear and you're like oh what are you wearing well that's what I'm trying to say it's like no it's like, you it's you no you're like what are we gonna wear or you're like oh this, I'm planning on wearing this and I'm just like mm, interesting <laughs> no it's me going oh this is what I'm gonna wear tonight and you going oh. <laughs> Is that what you're going to wear? Shout out to Sabrina Breyer. Yeah, uh, her. Who is a good friend of mine. She's not. But I mean, she's been a guest on one of my shows. And she's very lovely. Yeah. Yeah. No, she's great. Um, um, well, I'm Pioneer Peru. <laughs> I'm Trailblazer Nick. And this is Pioneers, Pioneers and Trailblazers. Trailblazers. I guess we could just get right into my town hall because it's kind of quick because of the braids. What? The braids. That's your town hall braids? No. The hookup that I had on Monday. Wow, you're going to go straight into it? Well, might as well because you have other stuff that we have to get through. So I might as well. It's a quick little one. Well, okay. Pop off. Well, All I'm right, just here saying. we go. I'm, what? I'm just saying. It's, I'm, I'm ready no, to go. No like icebreaker. No chitter chatter. No, you just want to go straight to it. Well, wow. what, the icebreaker, what is the icebreaker? What are we breaking the ice? Um, I mean, my what? Can you see sand? It's hot out. It's eighty plus degrees. It's eighty plus degrees. I saw challengers last week. Um, you know what? Actually, just go to your house. <laughs> <laughs> So no, actually, it's actually been a really long week for me. Like, I, once I get through today, I will feel a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. Um, because for townspeople who don't, who aren't aware, um, I am an actor. Um, on un- not working, <laughs> not work- <laughs> unemployed. Um, I went to college for it, and this whole week I've been preparing for like a pretty big audition. Um, and it's I've been doing it with one of my friends. Um. Bobby, who I went to college with, and yeah, famously your friend, famously my friend, and we have been uh, preparing together and and doing our self tapes and everything, and uh, it's been a it's been a lot of it's been a lot of work and it's been very stressful, and I've been waiting for this moment to finish so I can be done with it and not think about it again. For a moment like this, some people wait a lifetime. For a moment like this. Okay. Okay, let's get some (laughs) auto-tune. Who's that? (laughs) You know who sings that? Is it a man? All right, tell people, (laughs) here we go again. No, I know it's a man who sings it. I know it's a man who sings it. I just don't remember his name. Oh, it is not a man? (laughs) Wait, who sings it? Townspeople, as you always do, and love and support me, please flood the comments. Please roast her ass if you know who sings that song, which I'm sure some of you do. Thank you so much. Continue. Wait, I'm trying to think now because it's like, I know it. I've heard it before. Like, it's her, I've heard it in my mom's car when she was driving me when I was a baby. <laughs> Like a child, like I do. It's a, a pretty iconic song, very first song from a very iconic artist who came upon in a very iconic TV show on its very first season. Is she Canadian? Or she like is French not, Canadian? She's not, and you get two more. That's it. She's not Canadian. Um, American? Yes. <laughs> you get that, one doesn't more. that doesn't count. That doesn't count. <laughs> no, that counts. Um, 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 you um, get um, one more. Mommy. Oh, is it? Is, was she on a show called that has the word American in the title? Yes. Was it Miss Kelly? <laughs> 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 she thought it was Celine Dion first. I listen. I that era of music, my family. I wasn't like raised out on that on pop music from like the early 2000s Well, yeah, we know you had helicopter parents who were very strict. Well, no, no, they raised me on like country music from like the early. You 2000s. were ra- raised on country. A memoir yeah. from Nick no, <laughs> Literally, it was Carrie Underwood, Mama. We were listening to Ca- Carrie Underwood. We then how come every time I play Carrie Underwood at the fucking and uh, we have a jukebox, you like roll your eyes? No, I don't. I was literally when we were at Flaming Saddles. I said, "Oh, cue up." Oh, boy you, know, actually, you know what? And actually, I sang along word for word. Can, Thank you very much. That's the day that I, that's the day that I allegedly licked the table. Is that the day where I licked the table? When did you lick the table? Wasn't Thomas there? So we went to Flaming Saddles one day with our, our mutual friend Vin, and we were at Flaming Saddles. And every time I'm there, I already talked about this on, on the, a few podcasts ago. But I love Cuban country, and then I was singing All American Girl out loud, and you two were just 
I have a I video. Was singing with, I was singing with you, girl. I was raised on All American Girl. I was literally shooting a video. You two were just like... And I, was I like, think that oh. was a different... I think that was a different night. But anyway, moving on. My town hall. Wow. I had I had a hookup on Monday. Um, Congratulations. Re- Thank you. Repeat offender, Baldy, um, who I hooked up with. Not the last episode, but the episode before. So two weeks ago. He's. This is the third time I've hooked up with him. Um, but I worked during the day. I worked... the breakfast lunch shift and when i was done it was a gorgeous day outside and i had my hair like this for the visual learners it's i have two french braids in and a bandana covering it it's very like brooklyn kind of like giving butch lesbian um uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my vibe um especially for the summer um and so then anyway i was like i wasn't necessarily horny but i had some like errands to do and like every single plan that i had that evening like got canceled last minute loser so, so like i had like two different things like lined up and i was like oh i have to i'm gonna have such a busy day and then my whole evening was free so i had like one errand i had to run so then i go up like a couple of blocks from work to go do what I need to do. And then, sorry, one second, I have to burp. Excuse me. Did you see one of the comments on YouTube? I know. I literally looked to that point and I had to like, <laughs> and I scrubbed. For those who don't know, someone on one of the visual learners on YouTube commented that I, they laughed at a moment where I was like, I'm not drunk. And then like two <laughs> seconds later, I burped really loud. Um, That's two separate comments you're combining. Well, no, I thought it was all in the same comment. No, one was just like, oh, they, they time stamped it. We were like, oh, when Nick burped on minute 33 or something, whatever, I laughed out loud. And another one was just like, not Nick oh. saying he's sober and then being fucking like, Oh, I think it was the same one, wasn't it? See, I, I think it was Whatever. the same comment. Anyway, um, so then... Don't cut it. Don't cut it. You better don't... Not no, cut I'll leave it. that in. I'll leave that in. I don't care. Um, so then I did what I needed to do. I went to Walgreens and I got what I got printed off from the photo department. And then I was walking around Chelsea. And again, it was a gorgeous day. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, starts torrential downpouring. Like, and I looked at the weather and I was like, I'm sorry, where did it say that it was going to rain? And it only rained for like 20 minutes. Like it was really, really hard rain for like 20 minutes. I had to like hide under, uh, like in this little, like kind of part of this building that was like a, I don't know, hard to explain. It was basically like there was an awning of, of some kind like that in this building that I like. So an awning. Yeah. So I ducked underneath it and I like stood there for like 20 minutes and I was like trying to like, you know, get some dick. Cause I was like, well, I'm around here anyway. I was like, I might as well. And so then um, everything was kind of flopping. And then this guy that I hooked up with two weeks ago, was like oh where are you and i was like oh i'm you know on 18th and 6th right now he's like oh you're not too far from me you want to come over and i was like yeah i'll come over so i ran to cds picked up a fleet enema because i was like you never know and so then i get to his apartment he welcomes me in he like as soon as i see him he like pushes me up against the wall we're making out he's like fully undresses me i'm fully nude in his apartment and um he's like fully clothed and then we get into mind you everyone if you want to picture it again this is literally what nick looked like Except he had a red bandana. I had a red bandana on. And I was wearing a red shirt and black shorts. Um, but basically, this was the vibe I was giving. And so then he like had me fully nude. And then he took my bandana off when he was undressing me. And then he looked at my head and he was like, oh. He goes, this is an interesting look. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, it's it's hot out. I didn't want my hair all in, like, my face and stuff and, like, getting sweaty and gross. So I just, like, braided it back. And he was like, oh. Which is a funny thing to say because then, like, if that was your reasoning, like, you could have just, like, put your hair in a bun or something, you know? But, I don't like, like how like, it oh, looks yeah. in a bun. I know, but it's just so funny because you're like, oh, no, yeah. So I just put my hair back, took 45 minutes French braiding my hair. Yeah, just something real quick. It doesn't take me 45 <laughs> minutes. It maybe takes me, like, 30. <laughs> No, when I'm high, literally, because before I will French braid my hair before I go to bed so it doesn't like get all gross and like whatever when I go to sleep. So I will, I usually smoke a joint when I get home. And so like I'm always kind of high. And so sometimes I'll be so high. I like will be in my mirror in my bedroom, like braiding my hair. And then I'll get to a certain point and then I fuck it up. And then I just like stare at my like face for like too long. And then I have to redo the whole thing. And then I just redo it like maybe four or five times because I mess up like continually because I'm so high. I can't do it right. Anyway, that didn't happen this morning because I was sober. Um, but then anyway, so he was like, oh, that's Not it. for long. He was like, that's interesting. And so then we go into his bedroom. We're making out on his bed or whatever. And at one point, I'm on top of him, straddling him. And he takes one of my, 
braids and like grabs the hair tie and like pulls it off and then pulls the hair tie off at the other one and then is slowly trying to like unbraid my hair but it's really unsuccessful because like my hair is thick it's whatever and it was like cut in his fingers whatever and then we were getting caught up in like making out and like whatever and so then he's like slowly just like trying to like undo my hair with his like claws and it's just like not working and so then finally he like <laughs> so my hair looked crazy like if I like if I took my phone out or there was a mirror or something and I looked at myself my hair was probably all over and like half braided in some parts and not on others and then anyway um he then finally like got me on my back and was like sucking me off and while he was doing that I was like okay whatever so then I just finished unbraiding my hair because he's like obsessed with like me having long hair and he like likes to touch it and play with it so I was like whatever but yeah he was wash <laughs> wash he washed your hair famously. he washed my hair well because then after we hooked up so we didn't have sex like we didn't um there was no Ooh. penetration involved which honestly I gave him the opportunity because when he, he I first got there I had told him that I got caught in the rain and he's like oh I expected you to be all wet and I was like well I will be once I take a shower <laughs> and then he was like uh-huh and then just started making out with me and then we never got me into the shower and it was fine so he was just like jerking me off and we were sucking each other off and everything and he was edging me and it was honestly really hot because he was doing like um what's the actual like word for it like when you don't let somebody come isn't there like a phrase for that isn't that edging it's edging yeah, but there's like a p- specific like phrase. Blue balling you? No, there's like a specific phrase of like, cum- is it like called like cum control or something or like cum retention? No, like that one guy. Who the grinder guy from from Phil- from Philly? I told you to send me a fucking um a DM. Wait, I can pull this up now. Wait, you, remind me. Can- Cause I I went to DC and I was I, and I was like I woke up and I was still kind of hungover slash kind of drunk. We went we went to go see Jesse Ware, and then we were gonna leave. We were all driving out that morning, but then I was obviously on Grinder and I was just teasing this guy and he was really into me and I was like whatever. I just want to get some like good dicks picks and vids you know just for pick the road. collector just so you know just so the times people know I'm you're not ever, a, he's a pick collector no, i am not but like and also like i did tell him like you know like i i will come back to philly eventually you know like i'm not just collecting yeah girl but you have no plan anytime soon to go um but let's see uh i have it on the grinder mm. album okay well while you're looking for that anyway he was basically edging me and then anytime i'd be really close he's like no you can't come yet no I don't want you to come yet. And then I'd be like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it was honestly really hot. And then y'all are going to be so shocked. So there was a moment in which he was like kind of like straddling me. Like he got kind of like on me and he was like jerking me off and then kept running his, um, my dick on his gooch, which Peru didn't know what gooch was when I was explaining it to him. It's the area between, it's the skin between the balls and the hole. It's taint. It's taint. But the, the street slang is gooch. So taint is not street slang. Taint is... The medical term? Yes. <laughs> the girlie say gooch. Title of <laughs> 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 do they I've, the thing is like, i've never been told gooch online or like in person or even with friends like i've never heard gooch until you said it <laughs> so i don't know if that's a reflection on the girlies or a reflection on you and whatever you're consuming <laughs> no i just when's the last time someone told you gooch I don't think anyone has said it to me. I mean, I've still heard other people say it, but I just think it's a funny word. I like to say it. Gooch. The gooch. The gooch. It's a little, I don't know. So Sounds anyway, funny. He was writing my dick on his gooch. <laughs> and there, then all of a sudden he goes, when was the last time you topped? And I was like, oh, I'm going to be really vulnerable with him in this moment and be like, oh, I actually have only done it once and it was last June. It's going to be a year, a month. It'll be a year since I had since I topped. Oh my god, that's crazy! They went by like we gotta make a ceremony like that. Um, but anyway, so he was like, he was like, oh wow, and he goes, you just haven't topped since, and I was like, yeah, I just like haven't really wanted to, and like I have to be like really horny for it for me to like be able to do it, and like all this kind of stuff. And I was explaining that to him, and he goes, oh okay. And I thought it was gonna be lead into me maybe topping him because he was straddling me. When you me. said that, I was and, fucking uh, screaming. No, and I was kind of screaming too, but I was like, honestly, I would. I was like, I'm like right now, I'm like hoarding that for I would put it in. And, and then I was like, when was the last time you bottomed? And he goes, never. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I was like, do you ever want to? And he was like. Oh, absolutely not. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, so what are we doing? <laughs> like, why are you straddling me and rubbing my dick on your gooch? I guess he just wants to. He was just playing around. Anyway, when yeah. he. Anyway, and then he. And by the way, he the other guy from deep from from Philly just found that he said semen retention. What does that mean? I guess that's the medical term. Semen retention is the taint to to. Retention edging. just means like it comes back. 
like no he's it. retaining it he's just retaining so he's ed- he's like keeping he, it he's keeping it until he's only he's only coming during sex so he's not jerking off and he's not doing anything that doesn't re- like involve penetration to come Okay, I think he was just like okay, that's a little bit different than what we were doing. Okay, well, but he he, <laughs> he just, was edging you. He was just edging me and telling me I couldn't come, and I was like, yes, yeah, so whatever you say. I liked being told what to do. Yeah, please. Um, and then anyway, he jerked me off until I came, and I came so hard, and I came so much, and then he came, and then we took a shower together. He asked if he could um, wash my hair, and I said no. He was like, he's like, you want shampoo? And I was like, good, stand up for yourself. I was like, oh, it's not hair wash day. And then he was like, oh, okay, okay. And I was like, cool. He's like, you wash that? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, girl, twice a week. Because if you do it too much, it gets gross. Yeah. Um, and so then I took the train home and then I had a lovely time. I got myself a pint of ice cream. Oh, but what I did say was after I had sex, after I came, it was as, it was as if all of like the horny, like, it's like, it's just, like a bunch of like centuries of ancestral trauma had been like expelled from my body like i literally was like i don't ever need to touch a man ever again i was like i am free my people are my, let my people go <laughs> and they have been and i haven't been on like grinder or sniffies i've like been on there but like i haven't been like horny i don't know how what because for me it's like almost like um almost like an addiction like if i get a good one i'm just chasing for the next good one you know um, so I just, I, I'm just like ready for another one. That's like you the know? guy who's like, oh, I don't know, like if I'm if I'm just having hookups to run away from something. That's oh, like, like <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that's you. I was like, wait, am I running? Away? I mean, I I am getting more. You know, I'm four weeks out from my show, and I have. Big- <laughs> I think I'm gonna be like, <laughs> I'm four weeks pregnant. <laughs> I was like, what? I am four weeks along. We're four weeks along. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm for, I mean, guess I'm in my third trimester of almost giving birth to my show, I guess you could say. Um, but I, but it, it, it does make me like... Um, use i mean it is true you know like have i uh, have i not thought about you know when i'm feeling stressed or anxious like the great way to release stress for me is by getting fucked and i don't think i'm using it as a coping mechanism as much as i'm using it as a stress release you know i get what you mean and i i I agree because once i'm done i'm like okay I i do feel a release and the anxiety lowers and like i feel like i can focus more um uh, uh, unless I'm really in the mood, then I just want to go back to back to back. You know what I've been really fantasizing about lately? I've been really in, and this this again, this is just a reflection of what I've been liking to consume. I don't think I could really do it. I really have been like consuming a lot of like group and like orgy sex. Oh, but not the one where it's just everyone fucking each other. Because to me, that's a little bit too much. I can't. I There's don't know. too much going on. Yes, I'm like I don't know where to focus. Like if it's a group of like eight guys and they're all sucking each other and they're all I'm like, wait, who's fucking the person? And I'm trying to like focus on one person and I'm just like, okay, but then this is happening. So it is really hard for me to focus on those group scenes that are like that. What I've been really into is when there's like only one or two bottoms with like six other guys, like six tops or whatever, or even just four. <laughs> I'm like even just four. I've been really... This is one uh, OnlyFans creator. Um, well, I guess just adult entertainer. <laughs> entertainer. Um, his name is Maddie West. And he's verse. And he's... Tip, I'm vanilla white boy. Like, you know, oh, Hell's type. Kitchen Gay. You're type. You're type. But, but he, he does this thing with, like, almost, like, Smiley Guy from a few episodes ago. Like, uh, and uh, um, in the stylings of Max Lord... Uh, I think he may be inspired by the work of Max Lord because I can see it in his work that he's very, like, expressive in his face. So, uh, you know, he's very much like, oh, 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 and then he's, like, smiling and grinning and, like, he's really happy to be there. He's really happy to get six loads, you know? <laughs> she's just happy to be there. Just happy to, you know, uh, six... He, you don't even have to pay me, girl. I'm just happy to be here. But, uh, but and he and he's also verse, so I enjoy seeing him and do both. But, like, there's this one video I saw recently where he's getting it from, like, six other dudes. And I was like, that is so hot like i've just been really into seeing one guy just really enjoy because sometimes when you see these group videos too of like cum dumps or whatever sometimes and we've discussed this sometimes the guys don't seem sometimes it really does look like they just clocked in and they're you know they're just waiting to clock there's out there's no passion for the there's work there's no passion <laughs> miss maddie west thank you for your work because miss maddie west is there and she's present like every dick she gets 
no matter how small, how big, how girthy, or how juicy, Miss Maddie West is there to give that person validation and to give that person all they need to come inside of her. Because I see all types of digs going in on Miss Matt West, and every time he's putting on the performance, baby, he's a hard worker. He's just like, oh, oh, yeah. Probably a Capricorn. He's probably a Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> we we should ask. Oh my god, we should ask Miss Mary West. But anyway, so I, I was thinking. Oh my god, like I kind of want to get like like recorded doing that. But then that would definitely cross over into you know like sex content creation because like there's no way I would ever go as far as doing that and not fucking like make it public you know what i mean like i could never do all that hard work and then not brag about it because you know me <laughs> like i just want the attention in any way you could, i mean what you could do is you could have that recorded and then you could just send it to people directly when you want to brag about it like people you want to fuck be like when i want to get fucked by six guys <laughs> but then a lot of these other people who would be down for that like i, I don't know if you've really gone into the 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 nitty-gritty not underground but just like the sex scene well, you haven't <laughs> Who am I, who I'm asking you, but you yeah. know, do you know that account New York Seed? Aware of her, yes. You're aware of her. So they're not even on OnlyFans. They're like an actual website. You have to pay to watch their content. You know, I don't so, pay. I don't pay to watch their content. Me neither. Like a lot of the the actual OnlyFans creators, like post like. Well, because we know yeah. somebody who was a who was a, a performer in one of their videos. Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Because I have seen that one. Yeah, I have seen that one. And what I like about New York Seed's account is that they really do like to diversify their, like, groups, you know? So it's, like, different body types, different kinds of guys. I'm not upset with the staging of their videos. Like, they're... they're, they're you are upset? No, I'm not. Uh, no, obsessed. No, you're not obsessed? Yeah. I, I don't love, like, the, <coughs> like, sex the, swing situation. Like, yeah. like, the gear. Like, how it's, like, very... I don't know. I, I get it. But someone... Uh, but you, if you go through the others, you know, sometimes... I found one where... Uh, no, they're always in the nighttime. But there was one that I saw that was, like, um nicely lit <laughs> and mm -hmm. like it wasn't a hotel bed and i was like okay great no swings yeah the swings i'm not obsessed with the swing me neither and honestly like when people get on a swing i really thrive when i'm touching myself on seeing the full body when someone's on a swing like it just basically becomes legs up in the air and i'm like okay like i like to see the body of the person yeah that's why that's why i'm not obsessed with like i watched a porn I think it was, like, an OnlyFans video. Was it a couple of days ago, probably? Um, and it was, like, two really, really hot guys. Like, the top was so sexy. Like, he was very much my type. The bottom looked like me, which I love. Because then I, like, <laughs> I identify. And I'm like, that's me right there. Yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorite things. And so then, but it was all, like, close-up shots, basically, of the dick going in the butt. Yeah. It was, like, a dick and hole. And yeah. it would be, like, and it, then they would, like, switch positions. And then the camera, I'd be like, okay, great. We're going to get, like, a, a wide shot. Nope. It would still be a close-up in that position, then, of just dick and butt. And I'm like, for the whole whole video you literally have two of these hottest the hottest dudes i've ever seen and that is what you're doing oh yeah. my god girl we need better porn directors out there but th but then again we've discussed that but at the same time it's just some people know what people want like maybe that's what they know that the people that watch them that's that's how they're that's the view that people are paying the money for you know? i guess but also like i guess this the ghost goes into the conversation we were having yesterday at work about people who make things for themselves and then just hope the audience is there versus like making something for specifically for the audience in mind oh my god you remember what i talked to you about being vulnerable about my show and you're relating it to porn i love that oh i thought we were talking about the podcast oh it was with dane i thought i was talking last night oh I yeah work. Wow, oh you can make everything about you. I do. Wait, by the way, <laughs> by the way, so we've introduced, it's time to do a reveal. It's the, the reveal segment of the pod. Um, we're so happy that Nick and I are formally introducing um, a new element of the podcast. Yay! <laughs> I have no idea. And, uh, making it official, and Nick co-signed on it. Oh, I, and, and by me co-signed, it just meant me texting back. Oh, I like that idea. <laughs> I thought we were gonna plan a little bit more. But I thought it was really cute. And honestly, like since we just talked about Dane, who is someone you know who's a friend of the pod, not for long, <laughs> because guess what? 
the town is growing we are so happy for everyone thank you by the way we're not gonna segue into that kind of portion but thank you because the last video has been a, a plethora of support and comments and just you guys are really doing the lord's work for the town so thank you for showing your thank support you. and engaging we love that because of that the town continues to grow and there are certain people that we keep talking about on the pod that are like friends of the pod and we keep hearing from them personally they're texting us and they're being like hey guess what I mean, so in so town, I met three people, got them to listen to the pod, and guess what? They're quoting the pod. So we've got people who are close friends of ours that are literally spreading the gospel of the pod, mm -hmm. and they have receipts. Like we see the followers, we see the mutual friends. They're like actually quoting. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. So we have really dedicated friends, and we love that. And thank that you. Reason, we love you. We love thank you. We love you. Uh, shout out to Spencer. Shout out. Um, so because of that, we thought it would be really funny to add a new category to the town because it's about time. Um, as all of you guys are townspeople, it is time to introduce what we will now be referring to instead of friend of the pod as to the town, town council. council. The town council are those that like are also part of the town, but hold a special place and special role in the town mm -hmm. there are close personal advisors they help spread the good word mm -hmm. um and they've proven it they've proven time and time they've again. proven their allegiance um to their rulers which are us too mm -hmm. um and yeah we love and support and it's a tier that we have added and you too could become a town council member mm -hmm. if you continue to spread the good word yeah uh so stick around for more info on town council but for now new members of town council dane alex robert spencer welcome to the town council congratulations, congratulations. And there will be an initiation ceremony that we'll be organizing privately and there new will be blood oaths yes new um, york seed is sponsoring <laughs> <laughs> okay, could you, they will also be filming. No, we'll be filming. It is mandatory filming. Um, no yeah. loads refused. <laughs> that is so funny. Because this is other account of, of, of online creators that their, their handle is load count or load counter. Uh -huh. that's like, that's like literally the website name or like the the account name load counter. Uh -huh. And their logo is literally like the sticks, like the counts. you know? Yeah, when yeah, guys yeah. get their tally marks the tally marks tally, is that what it's called a tally mark uh -huh. well anyway a tally mark uh, the tallies the tally you know what every person needs their brand and a logo so just <laughs> give, give work to all the logo makers no shout out to them shout that's, out to beautiful. Logo makers. that's beautiful um, should we move on to some suggestions yeah let's move into the suggestions okay cute so we have a couple a couple shout outs and suggests um, thanks again for all of those we love posting on the gram um, you know see where everyone is coming from and we do have uh, some new additions to the, the our map our townsperson map um hello to uh sebastian from hell's kitchen <laughs> oh okay shout out local local townsperson we we love, 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 love. very very local uh, centrally located then we've got oh uh shout out to alexander i believe hello from serbia gay people in my phone hello serbia, uh, serbia. Hi. okay Gord. Serbia. Uh. who's next <laughs> uh <laughs> wait i forgot to tell the speeches oh uh, I also, we forgot, uh, Jonathan submitted a shout out a couple weeks ago and I think he got lost in all of the screenshots. So okay. I'm so sorry, but Jonathan, shout out to you. Jonathan, shout out to Jonathan. And then we've got one more, which did come with like a quick, easy breezy, um, town hall suggestion before I go into my town hall. Uh, this is someone who, uh, is from Chicago. Okay. Townsperson reporting for duty. Shout out from my cubicle at my sterile office job in the very not queer Chicago suburbs. As the only gay person in my office, listening to your podcast gives me the space to feel like my true self in a sea of straights. My only topic suggestion is mean gays in your thoughts and experiences. Oh, I can talk about this. Okay. Cause there was an experience at your birthday, your birthday at the ex -Lee. Did you tell me? I don't know if I told you. Wait. wait okay, wait. Before you tell me, can I just say that, like, if we had to identify as so anybody as a mean gay, I think, like, 
I don't know. Yesterday, the fucking t- uh, town council member Dane was talking about like he thinks that like you are like not a you're a person who like seeks revenge or whatever you know <laughs> or, or whatever who no. could you know yeah well i i will always get my revenge yeah but then like i feel like i never think of nick as somebody who is like mean or like re- like vengeful like i see myself like i'm definitely a mean gay like i like to stir the pot not a mean gay well i don't know no I mean, it. it's different i think what the type of mean gay that is just like if someone's wrong do you just want to justice yeah it doesn't that, mean that you're mean that's just, just yeah. that's different no the, so on your birthday we were at we started at the first location which is where the party was held and then we went to the exley which is in williamsburg and then um while we were there peru i don't think you remember this because you were way too drunk but Peru had this giant ass balloon. Balloon. This giant ass balloon that he brought into this packed bar. Like it was packed, and he had this huge balloon. Like it wasn't even like it's it's it was it wasn't just like a standard like balloon that you blow up. It was like a big one, and he was like it's filled with helium, yes. and he was carrying it around or whatever. And so he was holding it, and it kept getting passed around to different people in the group. Because it was because it was tied to the camcorder. It was? Yes. See, I wasn't that drunk, nigga. Okay, thanks for just being like, wow, it was just a on the floor. Says the girl who then was like, I don't know what happened. What? I don't know what happened last night. Wait, I, You're like, I don't remember anything. No, I said I went to Animal, and then Animal, I was too drunk, so I took my ass You don't home. remember biting me? Well, that, that was at the Exley. That was before I, well, I left. Yeah, this but, was like but, 20 minutes after this. Okay, well, 20 minutes is a big time when you're drinking, okay? So uh, anyway, so he had this giant ass balloon, and I was standing... Away from him and the rest of, you know, there was, like, more people from the group um, that was, like, with Peru, like, near the center of the bar. And I was sitting off to the side with our town council member, Spencer. And there was, in between us and the, uh, the rest of our group, there was, like, this group of, like, three or four, like, gay men who looked like they were millennials, like, you know, like, late 30s, um, whatever. And they... Yikes. <laughs> they were... We clocked them looking over at Peru and the rest of the group because there was a moment where some of the girlies... Also, I think it's because there were wi- also women in the bar, too, because, like, we were the one of the only groups that, like, had girls with us. Yeah. And so there was a moment where they, like, were taking photos in the middle of the bar, like, our group. And by our group, I mean Peru. And there was a fully flash being used, like, in the center of this, like, dark bar, and they're all, like, posing and stuff. And then these, like, three or four gay men were, like, first, like, all, like, watching and then, like, whispering to each other. And then there was, like, more photos being taken, and then they were, like, one of them kept trying to, like, pop in. But, like, it wasn't to, like, be funny. It was, like, to be an asshole. Yeah, of course. And it was, like, it was, like, oh, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna ruin their pictures. And, like, popped in or whatever. And me and Spencer, like, were watching them the whole time being, like, these, like, three people have, like, horrible energy. Like, they are awful. Like, yes, I can understand, like, it's, no offense, like, love you down, but annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Because also, like, the balloon, the balloon, you were dancing around the balloon, and you kept, like, bumping people with it. (laughs) But but once again, like, I understand... I, do I own that it was annoying? Yes, we know it's annoying behavior. The whole point of the party is that it was my super sweet 16. The balloon said sweet 16. Right. So, while, and we can dissect this. No, but we can. When, when, I, when I explore what I think a I mean gay is. But it's like, the whole purpose of my evening was to be like super sweet 16. Like, I have my balloon. Right. I would I would yeah, never yeah. carry a balloon anywhere. And, and also like... I own the behavior. I'm not saying... No, there's nothing wrong know, with it. I, as long as nobody's getting hurt, you no, know, no, like, it's, cool. No, no, it's fine. I'm just saying that it, it was just really funny because then, like, I mean, these people obviously didn't know because they were not the Brooklyn Art House before. Yeah, of course. They, of they, course. they weren't invited. Yeah. They, you, they just happened to sh- be yeah. there when you were there with your balloon. So, but, like, they, like, <laughs> saw... <laughs> but they saw... But, like, just, like, just like seeing you with the balloon and, like, the group, they were just, like, eye-rolling side-eye or whatever. Of course. And yeah. it was just, like, th- first of all, they were way too old to be acting that bitter. Like me and Spencer looked at each other and like, don't you have like a like a nursing home to get to, babe? <laughs> like, why are you being so nasty? And like we both looked at each other and were like, we don't like them. Like we literally were like, they're kind of gross. And yeah. we were like, yeah. And they just like thought that they were like the funniest like group like there. And yeah. meanwhile, they had no sense of style. They were rude, nasty, right. like rude, mean, or whatever. But like mean gays, it's just like thinking, from my opinion, what I think of a mean gay is a gay person who is entitled, thinks that they're better than other people. Right. Acts like it, especially right. in in settings where you're around a lot of other queer people, like a gay bar or like whatever. And then either one giving attitude to other people who you think are less than or whatever, or like trying to start 
you know, shit by like one, like photo bombing, you know, your right. photos or like attempting to like there's a moment where one of them was like trying to like hit the balloon away mm-hmm. from like the group yeah, because eventually we cut the balloon to go to the fucking like yeah yeah because yeah. then because then the balloon got let go or whatever and then they were like trying to like do something with the balloon like whatever and they thought that they were being funny it wasn't funny but that's like my opinion of mean gay people i think that they're losers like if you like just be chill like no one's hurting you no one's harming you like yeah if you like think something's cringe girl cringe but like cringe in silence exactly cringe in a way that like it's not you're you're not going out of your way to like be mean that's the thing when people go and like listen there are different kinds of mean people and they're and we're gonna be and i'm gonna get real frank about this and i might get some shit for this but it's true oh god there's two types of mean gays the not hot ones and the hot ones okay there is a category of mean gay of and and honestly it comes from both either the non-hot mean gays who just hate on the hot people because they're hot and the hot mean gays who just hate on everybody else who doesn't um uh abide by like the hot gay agenda you know of just being like gym rats and muscly and just not expressing themselves fully does that make sense so like both of what these kinds of mean gays have is just obviously like deep-rooted insecurities in projecting onto other people their meanness because it's something that they want so like what's something they're insecure about yeah so for example like these mean gays at the bar at the at exley it's like they only wish they had just the freedom and just like shamelessness to just like be cringe for a night and just like live your life and be fun and sure. just like be not caring what anybody thinks about you and the same thing with like the hot mean gays who you know like are literally the ones who just like dance in the middle of the dance floor and they're not even dancing they're literally taking up half the dance floor they're in the center of the dance floor but they're just like and I'm like, bro, like, are you here to dance or are you here to just stand around and cruise? Uh, and then when there are, like, the femme queens, the fucking girlies, the dolls who are just, like, literally voguing and living their lives and just, like, twirling and dancing and yelling and singing along to songs, then they're, they're all, you know, like, always, like, looking or, like, giving face or just annoyed that people are bumping into them. First and foremost, the Exley Mama Girl is a packed ass bar. People gonna bump into you. And guess what? Well, people also, bump into us all the time when we're there. People bump into each other repeatedly. When you're in a, in a, in a club or at a bar, you're dancing, you're going to get bumped into because guess what, mama? The dance floor is supposed and meant for dancing, not for but standing around and looking Also, hot. just like the actually is a hotbed for like mean gay behavior. Oh, yeah. I mean, the host, the, it is just like white gay. It's like... That's why I don't... I've only ever been there like two... I think I've been there three times in my life and every single time I've been there, I've had a bad experience. Listen, I'm not saying I have a bad experience there. I like the XC as a location. I like it. And yeah, are there cute people there? Absolutely. fucking lutely But there is always a level of like hierarchy and tiering and like... Now we're getting deep. <laughs> so thank you for your question because like mean gay behavior is like so annoying and like subscribing to like this idea that like the ones that are like the cool ones like are have to behave a certain way and that like the the hot ones like get to be mean or sometimes the other one <sighs> You know what I'm trying to say? It's just like... Kind of. This just reminds me... There's a, just, one of my experiences... This what happened in college. I, I don't know if I talked about this on the pod before, but I think I told you about it once before Peru. But I was like a junior. This was before I was 21, so I was using my fake. And I don't know if this is still a place in the city, but it was called Fish Bowl. And it's like Midtown. And they would have like a gay night on... I think it was like on Fridays, Thursdays or Fridays. And me and my friends went um, one night... And we got there super early. Like, we got there before, like, the, anyone else had showed up. And so when we got there, we got in. And they stamped our hands or whatever. We got there. It was dead. We were like, okay, let's leave. Go somewhere else and we'll come back. So we left. We went to a different bar. Came back to Fishbowl. By that point, the line had been, like, wrapped around the block. But because we had already got stamped and, like, got in or whatever, the bouncer just let us through because he remembered us. Mm-hmm. So we went back in and it was packed. And th- it was, like, 
kind of like Hell's Kitchen-y like vibe in terms of like the people that were there or whatever. And it was November. So I was wearing this, ja- I was wearing a jacket. And so I was like getting kind of warm because it was really packed in there. And there were lots of people there dancing and whatnot. And there was at one point where I took off the jacket. And as I took off my jacket, I made eye contact with a gay person across yeah, the yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. And when I made eye contact with him, he looked me like, la- like looked at me in the eye, laughed and shook his head and went, no thinking I was like trying to like flirt or try to dance with him or something. And I literally was like, first of all, excuse what? First of all, I would never, not you. And then also like, and he was like a very like stereotypically conventionally attractive, like young gay man that you would see in hell's kitchen. You can throw a rock, you hit 10 of them. Um, But I was like, first of all, bold of you to think one that I was like, just trying to flirt with you by, one accidentally and just so happened to lock eyes with you and then two to laugh and be like oh no like you could just ignore me you know what i mean like if you're not interested just ignore but that's like rude behavior and then immediately i got so self-conscious because i was like oh is everybody in here gonna think i'm trying to like get with them if i accidentally lock eyes with them like girl it's a crowded bar there's lots of people there's lots of places to look around if you're dancing you just may so happen make eye contact with somebody yeah i was like that was really shitty and i mean at the time i was 20 so like it makes you feel bad it makes you feel a very particular kind of way and then i was like uh and then other people in my group they then were like flirting with um guys or whatever and then we're making out with them on the dance floor meanwhile me and like one of my other friends were just kind of like standing there being like well, no one wants us. So, like, I don't know what we're supposed to do because, like, we can't dance because they really won't let us on the dance floor because yeah. it's very clicky. Yeah. It was just, like, so bizarre and so strange. And it was left a bad taste in my mouth. I know. And let me tell you, you know what? Actually, we're going to expand on this topic because I'm really, I really like this one. Um, and I have two experiences I'm going to share. And you know what? Maybe I'll, I'll just you were the bully. The town hall. <laughs> well, listen. You were like, I'm the bully. Am I the bully sometimes? I'm never a bully, but I, I, I do. I'm not a bully. So. <laughs> I, <yeah>. Listen. <laughs> At work is the is the joke that I am the mother and I am the Griselda of my job. Yes, but the thing is, like, it comes from like a genuine place because yeah, genuinely mean. No, because <laughs> I because I you know it is kind of like a, a story of like you know I've come from like and and I'll discuss this in my show like. I come from deep-rooted bullying and, like, deep-rooted, you know, like, hatred for myself, people being mean to me for for everything. (laughs) I thought you were going to be like, deep-rooted bullying. I've been bullying people since I literally came out the womb. I came out my mom's pussy. I was like, that's it, girl. She loose as fuck. (laughs) I was like, wow. Wow, girl, keeping it tight. Guess not. I came out of you real quick. No, And guess what? I was a C-section, baby. Me too. Yeah, because why? Because I was too much of a pain for my mom. (laughs) Oh, I came out ass first. They had to push me back in. (laughs) I was a bottom from day one. They literally were like, they're like, oh, his butt's you coming. Like, uh, I was like, ooh, put it in. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, actually, no, we're going to put you back in the uterus, babe. They popped me back in. They had to cut open my mom's tummy. Well, I told you the story. Like, whenever my mom, got, uh, she couldn't afford many sonograms, so she only got one. And the one that she got, th- they couldn't see my penis. So the entire time my mom, thought, girl. The, my mom thought I was going to be a girl for the entire, no, my, well, the doctor told him I was going to be a girl and then she never got a sonogram after that but then now they're misgendering you I know exactly and then and then and then later on my dad was like oh my god because i have two sisters and my dad was just like here goes another girl and then my mom was just like no i have a feeling it's gonna be a boy so then when the c-section happened and the doctor pulled me out i was like it's a boy my dad was so overclamped with fucking emotion cut to fag yeah he was like he's like i'm so happy you come out you're like he's like are you fucking he's like honestly Makes adoption <laughs> <laughs> well we'll talk okay two stories of mean gays uh, uh, quick quick ones I'm, I'm sorry I, and actually you know what this is i i, I want to talk about this is that okay uh, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about well, i know but I, it's, it's interesting so one is uh both are funny but they, they do they, i'll be the judge of that <laughs> they're deep rooted in mean uh when i was at rest in peace uh the Q the the club oh you know, my god um, before, i never went there before the controversy they, 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 had, they had like a sex night in which it was wednesdays i think and they had a speakeasy room which you went there and you could get fucked so i went there a few <laughs> times it was fun i like you it because, there? yeah oh, okay yeah but it was fun because it wasn't like dark roomy it was more like a dimly lit bar space in which they like closed off and you had to make the line to get in 
And then they would like count how many bodies went in, how many bodies came out, you know, <laughs> <laughs> semen included, <laughs> dead bodies. Because yeah, at fertilization, you know, as C- Christy Nome says, fertilization is inception. Um, anyway, <laughs> sorry, not to spew far right propaganda. Here oh, oh I, I was like, I wasn't following. I was like, what are you talking about? Wow, our pod's gonna get flagged for like political content. You know, like whoa, <laughs> fertilization. Um, anyway, all art is political. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I was whether the, you like it or not, I was at the sex party and I was going around, and then uh, I was really feeling my oats because like two guys had already fucked me and they were really hot, and I was like, oh my god, I'm the hottest person here, whatever. And then I go up to this like the one bring the one the hottest one at the fucking place. Like everyone was going up to this guy, and I had built up enough confidence to go up to him because I had already like two got fucked twice. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm cute. People like me here. Like they want to fuck me. And I went up to him and like, I were touched, you naked? Yeah, no, I was wearing like. Like a, like a thong and then you take off your shirt there i was wearing like jeans oh, my jean shorts see, my- like any sort of like bar or club or party where it's like you uh, like it's like shirts like off underwear or like, party or underwear party Mm-mm, sorry i'm not doing it i mean not everyone takes their shirt off but then at the same time like you will feel kind of you know one of the few but you know i mean you can just go there to watch you know sure but but anyway so, i will not be doing so i i saw this guy and i was like so confident and then like i got on my knees to start blowing him and then he literally went like this no no and then like lifted me up with his two fingers like this on my chin and i was like all right <laughs> got it i will not but the way he did it is so condescending like everybody here is here to fuck if you don't want me to blow you you know don't be rude about it like he was so performative about it he was like no no and then lifted me up and like sent me on my way and i was like the fuck like what the fuck are you my mom like Wait, that is like kind of crazy but also like what do you what does one do in that situation though if you like don't want to fuck somebody in that room? and that's that happens all the time if somebody tries listen if you ever go to a sex party or a dark room or whatever if somebody comes up to you and then starts to do something on you then you know just like politely like I've, what what i've done is just you know like i kiss them on the cheek or like I do something, or, or like I I smile at them, and you know like I just like kind of you know kind of just like vibe with them, and then just like move away, you know. And the thing is like people understand the the idea that you have to get people to understand is like it's clear. Like either I'll let you blow me, or I'm just like oh here, you know, I'll give you a kiss, and just you know like you know nod at you, and then just keep walking away, you know, or just walk away if somebody's trying. There's no need. Again, like you don't owe anything to anybody. So if you don't want to fuck somebody or be fucked by anyone, then you can just walk away. But this guy like made it a whole performance in like, you know, being yeah. about it. So it's like all you needed to do was just turn around, you know? Yeah. If I get on my knees and like you don't want me to blow you, then just turn around and go do your own thing. I'll get the hint. I'll get it. Sure. <laughs> you know? So anyway, so that was one, one one mean gate that was unnecessary. She was like, who the fuck do you think you are? Like, what? Like, okay, I'll just keep walking around. This other time, I was a baby gay. I was at this bar in Houston, and I was making the line for the bathroom. And this bathroom, this uh, bar in Houston, uh, gay bar, only had, like, private stalls. Yeah, uh, <gasps> That's two- my dream. No, but the lines are so long, because everyone who wants to pee and who wants to do drugs is making the line. So the lines are long. It's actually at the... Um, well, this is on the second floor of the Eagle in Houston, if you've ever been. The first floor has, like, a, a other bathrooms, too, like like urinals and whatever. But the second floor has, like, two private whatever. Anyway, long story short, I was waiting in line for the bathroom. And there were, like, this really... This group of, like, hot gays in front of me that didn't know each other. It was, like, six of them. And, like, three of them were talking to the other three. And, like, we kind of were kicking a little bit, like, three of the ones for closest to me where we're talking and whatever. You know, kind of, like, douchey energy, but whatever. You're just making conversation when you're in line. And so then uh, three of them are next in line. And they all go together, obviously, to do drugs. And so I was like, okay. And so then they open the door again, and then they're like looking at the line, and then they're like, ah. And so they're pointing at the other three, right? That were like waiting with me. Okay. They were like, they were like, oh, the first one. He was like, you come here, come here, and they're calling him. And then they're like, oh yeah, come here, come here. So they're like, f- f- uh, single list, and we had all talked together, and they made eye contact with me. So when I see the people in the bathroom go like this, come in, so we can go in together. I was like, oh, like we're like, all going. We're all going bitch the three of them in front of me plus me we go they let the three others in and then they're like no not you 
and they like shoved me away the bathroom line and i was like i was so embarrassed but also like so upset i was like first of all i have to pee (laughs) so i'm making the line to pee these fucking idiot mean gays like left me out of their fucking cocaine group which is fine i just wanted to feel included but also like now i'm so embarrassed that like i'm not gonna stay in line and wait for them to get the fuck out of the bathroom i just fucking left and i literally left i was so embarrassed oh my god i was like you know and like that kind of behavior is just like there's no need to be catty so like moral of this fucking rant about mean gays is just like stop being a fucking dick and if anybody's being a dick to you like they're not worth the energy let me tell you what spoiler alert or not even all of these mean gays when you actually like because i've done it pretended to like you know want to be a part of their circle you know like i've i've tried so hard to be a part of that clique once you're a part of that clique they're all boring Oh, I've never. I've always known that. I like. I. I see it. I know, it, it I took see, me. It took me a bit because I've always had a complex of wanted to belong. You know. Sure. So like, I tried so hard, and like, once I made it onto those clicks, I was like, I am so bored. And that's how it is. Like, I, I. It's like how I feel a lot about like the social media, like gay people, because it's like on, Girl, oh. on on Twitter there there is like a lot of um. There's a lot of prominent gay people online that are, like, based in New York and Brooklyn specifically that I have seen, like, posts and stuff that I think are very funny that I, you know, respect or, and whatever. And then being like, oh, my God, I just want them to, like, follow me back. Like, I want to, like, wanna, or, like, or, like, this person seems so cool and so interesting. And then it's, Same like... Same thing with comedians. I'm going to put it on blast. Okay. Well, then, anyway. And so then it's, like, you do sort of, like, follow them for a period of time. And then you do kind of see, like, the things that they're posting or, like, the things that they're interacting with or, like the people or like how they like interact with their friends and it's just like oh like your opinions i actually don't align with or like the things that are like oh i don't think you're that funny or that interesting after a period of time you're just kind of like hot or like whatever and so it is like very funny because it's like a lot of it it's just like people gain prominence whether it's online or in real life with other people just based on how they look and how they present themselves or like kind of the vibe that they give off that they're too cool for everything but then like once you kind of are accepted into that group you do kind of see the underbelly of it and it's usually less exciting than what your you know um projection of it is you know what i mean like you you personally probably think it's like way more interesting than it is and once you see that you're like oh I, I, why did i spend all this time like wanting to like be your friend or like hang out with yeah. you and all this kind of stuff so that's something to just keep in mind don't make friends based on how attractive they are make friends based on you know or even how popular they are that or too. how you feel like you want to like w- or how it will make you look yeah. or like whatever it'll boost your status like honestly like I you you will find so much more comfort and security in your life when you surround yourself with people who genuinely like you genuinely interest you uh, inspire you make you feel safe make you feel comfortable all those kinds of things and to tie it to the exit situation I am so blessed I start crying (laughs) (laughs) I am so blessed to have a group of people and friends and loved ones that I have that like allow me to like have my cringe super sweet 16 birthday party and i feel so safe and so comfortable to like do it in front of them knowing i'm not gonna be judged knowing they love me knowing like they know who i am and like what i provide to them hopefully and what they provide to me like none of these mean gaze or mean behavior or jealous behavior is gonna get in the way of like the love that my friends have for me and the love that i have for them Mm -hmm. so like find yourself a core of people that see you and like find you interesting and want to hang out with you and think you're the best and any mean behavior around you bitch like let them fucking like fucking just like um rot in their fucking meanness but also, but also clocking like how maybe it's not necessarily how like if they're mean to you specifically or how, i always am cognizant of how they treat other people of course so it's like and, like they could oh. like someone could be because i what i've come up with against a lot is people tend to be very like overly nice with me because oh, it's be- oh. because i 
do have something that they want, whether it's clout or this just happened to me, and you know who I'm talking about, Nick. Yes, girl. And and girl, uh, you start seeing it, and then you're like, wait. Well, and the thing is, it's like it's it's fine because it's like i mean i i rarely have people be mean to me like very directly like if and people are pretty nice to me like at all times but like interesting (laughs) people love me people love me um but i will see like this is specifically online like i will there are certain like people who are prominent whether it's on social media or whatever um or like in the industry who are like super nice and like whatever to me but then like i see how they treat other people or like talk about other people online or like whether it's in person talk about other people and like whatever and i'm like oh like you're kind of nasty you know like you don't need to be talking about people in this way like that person did absolutely nothing to you yeah you know what i mean like why do you need to tear them down for absolutely no reason just because like what you think that they're cringe or like you think that they're ugly or like whatever like why do you care like doesn't affect you in any way so i think like also making sure that you know maybe they, that you could because you, you could someone's excuse could be like well they're nice to me and it's like well does that matter because yeah. if they're not and good they could be nice to you but they could be a shit person to other people yeah and more than likely all these people are being nice to each other because they just want something for show. they want something and and all, uh, listen we can you know we can wrap this conversation up but there is so it's very nuanced yes. things can be transactional of you know? course and we're and you know what if you want something to be transactional to benefit you do it but just go into it full knowing that like you're getting something in return you know like it is a big conversation, but we are about, you know, we're a month away from Pride Month. It is a time for the like, community and building each other up and like being, you know, having your clothes, girlies and, and dolls with you. So mm-hmm. mean gays, trash, hate, but also not worth it taking up your time. Find your own group of people. And if you see the mean gays, turn around, go to another part of the bar, go to another part of the gig and just fucking remove yourself from that energy because there is fun a- anywhere you go yeah, and knowing the uh, avoiding those people but also cuz like i mean the queer community also is already so marginalized so yeah. it's like to ha- also then within the community have people who are being disrespectful or rude or ostracizing like you know even smaller subcategories within the community it is just kind of like disappointing because again it is like we are all marginalized of together course. like we are all in this together for the most part whether we like it or not yeah and it, and you know <laughs> the image of gay culture right now it really it is intrinsically rooted on a lot of insecurities you know all the way back to the 80s you know like all these hot gays and hot gay culture that's been like really dominating up, up until now it's 2024 and it's still something that that's pervading um, the fucking community but there is a root of it and it's not anybody anybody's fault it really is society's fault mm-hmm. and there's so much that goes along with this but anyway we should probably uh, we should start wrapping um before we go into pioneer and trailblazer can i just say there is a certain very dedicated townsperson that sent me a personal dm okay and accurately guessed the drag race queen (gasps) that you wait how did they guess i have no idea how but the dm was just like hey dedicated townsperson here is a drag race queen mentioned blank i was like "Ah!" and I had to say... Did you confirm or deny? I said both those things. I can't confirm nor deny. Well, you just confirmed now because they guessed it correctly. Oh. Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm not saying who it is, so... Sure. Just so, so that townsperson knows that it is it is true. That is correct. Yeah. There is no... Well, there is no uh, written evidence that, that I said yes. There is... Um, an auditory evidence that it is correct but there's but no I, way to trace, I, it, back to to trace it back to that person so so either way thank you for your research and development townsperson you are on your way to be a part of the town council because i don't know how you got it that's crazy but even not even like multiple guesses it was just the one or the one wow do you have a pioneer the pioneer uh yes it is i had a busy day this morning that ended up being usurped by i okay so you know uh, i told you about don alberto the dominican man who does my haircut um mm. and i love him 
he's only good at the fading he's not good at the cutting of the hair so today i needed a haircut so there was this new salon that opened one block further down and i went to it bad vibes from the beginning pioneer is the queer very queer uh mexican hair stylist quote unquote uh and uh, he's from mexico so that's why i'm calling him mexican (laughs) okay (laughs) okay just saying um botched my fucking haircut oh no which is why i'm wearing a baseball cap i had a have an emergency haircut appointment right after this with don alberto and that's what i get for cheating on my man that's what i get because I could have just gone to Don Alberto to get my beautiful fade that he always does for me and then just gone somewhere else to just get my top, you know, trimmed. evened out and trimmed. But I went, I was like, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone, just go somewhere else, not tell Don Alberto, and then go to the salon to get a proper haircut. Botched. Botched. my f- and, and pioneer behavior, why? Because throughout the entire time, this fucking hair is so, so you're from Peru? So, oh my God, do you go to Jer... Like... Look, I was like, you are delusional if you think I'm going to continue engaging in conversation with you, knowing that you're literally botching my hair. You didn't say anything? Well, at one point I was like, okay, I think he knows what he's doing. But then, like, the fade is off and it's uneven. And, like, listen, like, even if you can see it, like, Nick, you probably don't think it looks bad. But, like, oh, Nick's like... I don't know because, like, I can't really tell because you still have the hat. Yeah. But, like, and also I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to fades. I don't know. But, like, the fade is... Oh. oh, I get what you mean. Oh, see, <laughs> girl, if the white boy is clocking it, I get what not you mean. good. I get what you mean. So, pioneer behavior to that awful fucking, and never again will it cheat on Don Alberto. Never. My trailblazer for the week is um, there's a new reality show that I discovered. Oh it's on YouTube. It's called The Starlet. It's from 2006. Um, it's America's Next Top Model, but for actresses. It only lasted one season, and it's six episodes, and I'm two episodes in, and it's so fucking funny. Like, it, it's so good. And Faye Dunaway, who um, I love her down, we share the same big three. She's a Capricorn Sun, Leo Moon, Virgo Rising, Diva. Wow. She's one of the judges on the panel for it. And it's so funny because she is ruthless. She's she It's ruthless. She like, they will, because basically it's America's Next Top Model, but for actresses. So it's like they do screen tests and then they like show the screen test in front of like the panel and they like judge it in front of them and like let them know like how they did. And Faye Dunaway is like, you have no talent. <laughs> you should quit acting to the, like, these like 20 something year old girls. And they're all she like the Janice Dickinson. Of oh, hundred percent. And they're like all sobbing and they're like, Oh my God. But the one, the one who's like the true trailblazer, her name is Courtney. And she goes with a K in with a C with a C and she, they show her a um, screen test or whatever. And like the first kind of like challenge is they have to like show emotion on screen. So they have to like be upset and cry. Like in a scene is like one of the first challenges that they have to do. And so she comes right out of the gate, like sobbing or whatever. And so they show the scene and then and Faye Dunaway goes, I, next, she goes, like, there's more to acting than crying. She's like, there, you need to cry more. And then this, she immediately goes, without hesitation, she goes, I know that. And, she, and Faye Dunaway goes, uh, she goes, well, you, you have talent. And she goes, I know I do. And she was, like, just, like, trying to hold back laughter because she's like, I'm trying to give you a critique, girl, but, like, you're you're interrupting me. And then, like, all of the judges are like, you have a bad attitude. And then she's like, What? what and then she's sobbing and then she goes to back to like the rest of the girls in the green room where they're holding and she's like sobbing and they're like oh my god what happened and she's like i guess i'm a cocky bitch (laughs) (laughs) and i was like obsessed (laughs) um so those episodes are on youtube just look up the starlet it's so fucking funny it's so none of them became stars no none of them did none of them did um also because one of the other actresses is vivica i mean one of the other judges is vivica a fox who um (gasps) oh she which i mean listen she was doing some stuff in the early like late 90s early 2000s but now she just does two b originals I mean, hey, like low budget, low, low budget. I don't know if she wants to, babe. But she will never. No, but she's still Vivica fucking Fox. So does Gen Z know who that is? No, they don't. Unfortunately, sorry, girl, if you listen, but she doesn't. But Uh, if you were to listen, girl, sorry, Gen Z doesn't know you because you you don't have the name power. You don't have the star power that you once had. And I'm just saying that as somebody who is on the Gen Z, as a Gen Z person. Sure. The only reason I know her is because she did... What movie did she do that I saw? 
There was like a movie that I saw that was like a low budget movie that she did that I was like, oh, and I saw it like when I was like in middle school, and that's I how I know. knew she was. I don't know. I'll have to look it up, but anyway. Follow oh us God. on Pioneers and Trailblazers on Instagram and YouTube. Subscribe to be a visual learner. Make sure you spread the good news so you can become a member of the town council. Oh my God. And then you can follow Peru everywhere at, at Hey Peru. You can follow me at Nicholas.Rose on Instagram, Clownface Binch on TikTok, and Clownface Bitch on Twitter. Yeah, we're close to 700 on YouTube. Basically at 900 on Spotify, which means we just need 100 more. We're reaching milestones. We're really working hard. There, We are uh, soon-ish enough going to be talking about uh, season two. There is a lot of things happening for us, but it's a really busy season. Summer is going to be really busy for us, but we cannot continue this without your support. So please make sure you're leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, following on Spotify, comment uh, if you're a visual learner or if you're not go there smash the subscribe button and if you continue doing that then we'll continue doing this okay bye, bye.